continue on with our mission of parameterizing curves. Now we're going to parameterize a part of an ellipse in 2D. This is actually the first place that we're going to see some of the places where we need to be very careful with parameterization. Here we have an ellipse, and what we want to do is parameterize this piece of the ellipse here. And we can see that we're looking at the positive x part of the plane, and between y equal to minus 1 and y equal to 1. We can see that the center is at 0, 0, and that the semi-horizontal axis is of length 1, so a equals 1. The semi-vertical axis is of 2, so b equals 2. So we can write an implicit function for this piece fairly easily. Our goal is to parameterize that. So here is our implicit function with our intervals. x and y, there's no p and q, so we're centered at 0, 0. a is equal to 1 here. a is equal to 1 here. b is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2. There it is, 2. So this gives us the whole ellipse. And then to get our piece, we have x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is between minus 1 and 1. Now, remember that we called this going angular. We are going angular with our parameter, but very carefully. In what sense? The sense is that it's very easy to think that because t goes from 0 to pi halves in the first quadrant, that this angle is t. This angle is most definitely not t. So you cannot measure this angle and say, oh, that's where I need to go, t between minus that and plus that. This angle is not t. We'll find out how to find the angle. It's not difficult, but you should remember that although it goes from 0 to pi halves here, it doesn't go according to the angle. That's very important. So we remember our formula is this. We look at here what we have. We have p equal to 0, a equal to 1, q equal to 0, and b equal to 2. So we can find our parameterization here. So s of t equals our x function is a is 1 cosine of t plus 0, p is 0, y equals 2 times sine of t plus 0. So we will rewrite that. So x equals cosine of t and y equals 2 sine of t. Now we need our interval. And the point is, how much is t here? What is t equal to here? Well, the way to do this is to say, how much is y? y equals how much? Well, y equals 1. So then, 1 equals 2 sine of t. So then, sine of t equals 1 half. And we're very careful to stay in radians. Now, we can know this by heart and say, oh yes, t equals pi over 6. Right? Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Or get our calculator and say radians. 1 divided by 2 equals 0.5 inverse sine. So 0 0.524. 0 0.524. So our interval on t for this piece here is t in minus pi 6 to pi 6, or if you like decimals like I do, minus 0 0.524 to 0 0.524. So our parameterization of this piece of curve right here is this. Now let's go and check this with GeoGebra. And I emphasize this because I've been teaching this for a while. And I simply assumed that because the angle from 0 to pi halves gave me the first quadrant, that the angle on this point gave me the angle on the parameter. So 
I was being lazy. I said to myself, I will draw the ellipse. I will draw the, the line y equals minus 1, y equals 1. I found this point with the intersection here. I said, give me the angle. And I put that in for my t. And I didn't get the right piece. And that was when I realized that the angle doesn't go with the point and that I had to use the substitution backwards, that this point is where y equals 1, and find t that way. So always check is my rule.